Greetings and welcome to the Modern Alchemist channel. I'm Aubrey Forrest, the Modern Alchemist, and this is Human Alchemy 101. Johnny Cupcake 7 asks, any suggestions for increasing positive energy or positive spheres? Well, Johnny, I think I got your answer. Are you ready? Let's put our thinking caps on and get serious. <laughs> because we're going to pump you up. <laughs> Let's begin. Alright, so the question then is um, how to increase positive energy, how to elevate yourself, move among the spheres, however you wish to, to describe it. Ultimately, the goal is, um, I feel, I'm stating as if I were you, um, I feel I am in a depressed state and I wish to elevate that state. I wish to move up, I wish to not feel like shit. <laughs> and that's really it, right? That's, that's what we're all in for. Well, to, to be quite frank, um, this is one of the core components of Temet No Se to me. This was the thing that got me into this game, got me into alchemy, was to seek a means by which I could find a, a structure of thinking that would let me get myself out of the pit, you know? And this is something I think that affects a great many people who are within any spiritual community, whether it's an esoteric community or a Christian community or, or what have you, that, that, that those who find themselves um, the most sensitive to the veil to other human beings, um, to the affairs of the world, find their consciousness is pressed upon, and and it results in anxiety and depression. So the first thing that that you have to realize is these tools that I'm sharing with you then are tools that I've proven to be effective for myself. Um, they may not work for you, but at least you'll have additional tools for your toolbox so that as you try to combat uh, seasonal affective disorder or the winter blues or just feeling like crap and it doesn't have to depend on the weather could be sunny outside right now where you're at could be summer when you're watching this and you still feel like crap and you want to sit in a darkened room well this, this is the video, at least this is what helped me to get out of doing that and doing something better, something fun, something engaging. And with that, let's take a look at some of these tools. All right, tool number one. The first thing that you want to recognize is this. Are you suffering? Or are you suffering because you're suffering? <laughs> you have no idea how important the distinction is. If you're suffering genuinely because something horrible has happened, right? Death of the family or loss of job or something like that, um, then, then that, that suffering itself, that emotion can be tracked to something substantive, something that is legitimate, something also that is temporary, right? Because the event is, is, a, is a point in time and, and then we navigate ourselves around that point until at one point we, we find that our orbit around that event has, has been removed significantly so that the event no longer really affects us. 
Um, it's always going to be part or a component of who we are, who we become. But that doesn't mean it has to drive us, to affect us. Now, that's that. If you're suffering because you're suffering, that's an entirely different state of being. Because now, now it's woe is me time, right? Oh, my life is so horrible. Why is your life, oh, because I'm so depressed. Well, why are you so depressed? Because my life is so horrible. <laughs> and yet, the person who is, is suffering because they're suffering, they can't actually logically qualify or quantify um, the degree to which they're suffering because it's, it's extended one level of separation from an actual reason to be not feeling good. So if you can get your mind around that and go, oh, okay, that's like a toehold on the cliff face where, where you can take a moment and think. Because the way to get through all of this is not to feel your way through it. You need to be um, <clears throat> Virgil. You need to be Virgil to your own Dante as, as you descend into the rings of your own hell. That's what you have to be. And Virgil is the voice of reason. Virgil is the person who is helping Dante, who is also you, interpret what it is that's going on and explain it to yourself. Um, and this is what you need to do, is adopt that. Now, elements of this, which are helpful, I've presented in a previous podcast, um, and so Human Alchemy and the Art of Thinking. And, and in this case, the, the idea is to simply recognize that, that if you find resistance, if you find resistance to what I'm saying, if you're like, no, you don't understand, I feel horrible, then you are in fact speaking for your subjective self and you are giving command to the stage, to the subjective self. Because there are other aspects of you that are enduring this as well. And if you allow them to have presence on the stage of your mind, if you allow your objective self to step forward and say, well, you may feel this way, and that is entirely legitimate. However, objectively, do you actually have reason to feel this way? And that, that avenue of thinking can be a resort of salvation for you because you can use this internal dialogue for instances of extreme anxiety. So that when, if, let's say, you are in a situation and suddenly you're just struck, with anxiety, you know, you know who you are. You're, you're, you're maybe at the milk aisle, <laughs> and you're looking at all the different milk, and you're like, ah, there's too much to choose from. Why can't it just be one brand of milk? I don't know. That, that <laughs> Certainly, I've had experience in the milk aisle, right? <laughs> and, and you have to go through and ask yourself, you know, where is this feeling coming from? catalog all the things in your life that are good. And if there's stuff that's wrong in your life, guess what? We're back to that core again, where, oh yeah, there is a good reason to not feel good. And you can grab onto that and do something about it, right? Instead of suffer because you're suffering. So it, as you tick things off, well, the job is working fine. I may not like my job, but my job is my job and it's paying the bills, kind of, right? It's getting me through then that may, isn't part of your anxiety. Um, if there are elements of your work, then you can work yourself through it and look at the parts of your job that you have control of and the parts you have absolutely no control of and learn to come to terms with that. Because it's the subjective self's need to constantly have its thumb on something and have control of a thing that actually is causing some of your anxiety. Because the subjective self is is has a, a singular location. It can't be everywhere. And so it'll start feeding on itself and creating uh, anxiety where nothing needs to exist at all, right? Oh no, this person didn't email back uh, to my proposal. And I, I just wrote it like five minutes ago and it was really important to me. And it doesn't seem to be important to them. What's going on? And this brings me to my next key. The next tool that you can put into your um, toolbox to help you resolve this. And that's the tool of understanding what priorities are. Alright, so 
One of the things that, that causes, in my experience, a high degree of depression and anxiety often is in relation to our understanding what a priority actually is. We believe that we understand priorities and we often pretend to organize our lives around those priorities, um, thinking that we're giving honor to them, right? By thinking about them once in a while or maybe making a list or trying to make a resolution, since it is New Year's resolution time, trying to make that a priority, right? And uh, instead, when we fail, when, when we don't meet the needs of those asserted priorities, then we become depressed, we become anxious, we become guilty. Um, we have regret or remorse, and a whole slew of other negative emotions, all of which are manufactured internally, unless we actually owe something to someone, we are obligated. And then there's an external pressure applying itself in addition to our own internal dialogue, which is self-defeating at this point. So, <clears throat> the thing that you need to realize then is this. Um, what am I doing instead of doing the thing that I'm thinking is my priority? If, let's say, I state as a resolution I want to lose weight, but then I'm not doing anything to lose that weight, or let's say as a New Year's resolution, I want to be more productive with regard to certain um, uh, things I want to research or do or work on or create or uh, clients I want to develop or what have you. Any number of things that result that are the result of you creating and producing and not meeting that demand that you internally, let's say, create or produce for yourself. Remember, external pressures are different. External pressures are twofold. Either we accept them as a, as a component of our life, like I buy a house, therefore an external pressure is a mortgage, so I need to meet that demand. Okay, or I have a job, an external pressure, which supports my mortgage, um, and I now have to meet the demands of my employer. Right? <clears throat> Internal pressures are I want to change as a person. I want to develop this. I want to draw more things to me. I want to be fitter. I want to be happier. I want to elevate my emotions, right? These are all internal driving mechanisms. Well, if you're not doing a certain thing, if in fact after having established for yourself in writing or in mind, hey, I want to do this, and then three weeks later you find yourself into the new year and it's not happening, well, then you need to ask yourself, what have I been doing in place of the thing that I thought were my priorities? Because there's the tell. There's the revelation. There's the component of temet nose, the time when you get to know yourself. Because clearly, you are always going to be engaging in what is a priority to you. The difference is, is that some priorities are acknowledged and some priorities are done without acknowledgement. Some priorities become your favorite sin, where you say to yourself, oh, I know I shouldn't be eating this cupcake, or oh, I know I should probably be spending more time working on this account rather than playing some Call of Duty, even though I feel really stressed and I want to shoot something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't play Call of Duty. I play Warcraft. <laughs> so I, I spell something. <laughs> Lightning bolt. But uh, either way, you have to ask yourself then, where is my priority? Because if I'm doing the other thing, then why is that actually a priority? Is, is it a self-nurturing thing? If you're spending more time recreating than you are creating, what is it about the recreation that you need? What is it supplying for you? And how is that telling you about yourself? Because all of this stuff, is what impacts your ability to do everything else. And if you don't understand what your actual priorities are, then, then you can never actually fulfill your potential. Because you will never get out of your own way. You'll always be in your way. Always telling yourself, oh, I'm a failure, even though you're succeeding at something you never actually considered was a priority. But we are always successful in the things that are important to us. And, and those become our priorities, whether they're hidden 
or whether they're overt, whether we acknowledge them or whether we deny them. Our actions reveal the truth of what they are. And, and as such, by your own fruits, you shall know yourself. Okay, so the next step with priorities is understanding that not everyone else has your priority. So if you find that you are encountering tension with others because they don't seem to think that they need to drop everything they're doing to go do whatever it is that you think is important, that's okay. You just have to recognize that you can make a choice at this point. You, you can choose to find your anger and unleash the subjective self on the situation and, and let it distort what could have been an okay situation into something that is no longer okay. You can choose to do nothing and just let whatever priority now expire or be unattended. So let's say you say, hey, would you go water those plants for me? And, and your friend decides or your companion decides, hey, uh, I'll get around to it, and then they never get around to it and your plants all die. Well, ultimately, because that was your priority, it's incumbent on you to make sure that it happens, which is your third decision. To accept the truth that not everyone's priority is your priority, and, and then just go do it. Just, just get up. Go take care of whatever business you need to take care of and get that off your list, and then go do something else. And don't begrudge another person, because guess what? They have their own priorities. <laughs> they have their own stuff that they want to do. They have their own stuff that they're trying to do, and they have their own guilty list of stuff that they said, hey, I really should be doing this, but they're not doing it. And as a result, now they're just like you, feeling like crap, trying to elevate themselves, get their emotional state up, not feel anxious, because you know what? We're all in this together. So if, if you find yourself feeling anxious and depressed, trust me, you're not out there on your own. There is everyone out there doing the same thing. And that may not make you feel better, but it probably should, because um, misery loves company. <laughs> <laughs> and might as well be miserable with everyone, right? At least until you can spread some smiles, spread some joy, and realize that the true joy then, the true elevation, is to dispense with all the stuff that's keeping you down. Literally, I you know, so let it go. advice because we hold on to so much stuff we accrete stuff to our soul it just sticks to us and 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 then we don't know what to do about it we don't realize that we can just kind of wipe it off you know and sometimes we might have to get a little metaphorical chisel out there chisel it off but either way you know get out there <clears throat> and make it happen. Ultimately, I found the greatest liberation came when I realized that um, it was left to me. And that, that brings me to the final tool, the final really big tool that, that helps get things rolling. Ready? All right, the final big tool, the thing that I have found that really helps is to understand that the universe functions on frequency and vibration, which means that we as beings of light, we as human beings, also function on frequency and vibration. What does this mean? This means that if you want to dig yourself out of a dark place, Turn on the lights and get up. Get up 
and do something. Whether it's to dance, to turn on some music, I guarantee you. I, I had a friend who, who used to tell me all the time, she'd say, motion creates emotion. And, and it is absolute truth. You can take that to the bank. There is no way that you can remain grouchy, can remain down, and have low energy, have yourself suspended in this dark place when you use the strength of your will, the strength that is inside of you, to get up, turn on some music, and move your feet, and, and find something that's upbeat, and enjoy that beat, and feel that rhythm, and recognize that that's the vibration, and that you are elevating your vibration. You've turned on the lights, which is elevating your frequency, you turned on the music, it's elevating your vibration. In this time of year, especially in the dead of winter, right now, this time of year, the biggest thing you can do for yourself is keep some lights on. And what I've done is I went to Costco um, and I purchased those LED lights instead of using incandescent or the spiral, you know, fluorescent ones. You can get yourself a 60 watt light running for five kilowatts an hour. That's nothing. That's pennies. And, and you can leave that bad boy on as long as you need to leave it on. And believe me, it makes a big difference. So try out those three tools. Two of them are about perspective, and one of them, the last one, is about what you can do, the action you can do. The next steps after that are left to you. But you have to give yourself some time, and you have to give yourself some care, and you have to nurture yourself. Recognize that if you, as a practicing magician or alchemist, or a spiritualist, or a medium, are feeling depressed, feeling heavy laden, that, that that burden can be cast aside with a thought. And it's up to you. All right, my name is Aubrey Forrest, and I am the Modern Alchemist, and this is Human Alchemy 101. I'll be talking to you soon.